All right, so for this video, we're going to take a look at the new PolyShape tool. Um, ultimately, this tool is pretty cool because it gives you the ability to kind of create a shape by placing points within the editor directly and um, gives you a lot more freedom on the different shapes and things that you can make. So let's take a look at it. First thing you want to do is go head over to the menu and select on new poly shape. When you click on it, it's going to have a dialog box that pops up letting you know that it is active. So how to use it is pretty simple. You just click within the scene here. I'm going to just click anywhere. Uh, let's go ahead and create a basic cube. I'm just going to click anywhere within the scene. And what we're doing is we're going to click the last point we started with. And um, once we do that, it's going to connect. And because we're in a perspective view, um, it gives you its ability to basically scale this object. So I'm just going to go ahead and maybe just scale it up to about three meters here. All right, great. All right. So now that we've created that, uh, you've ultimately created a mesh. And so you can go ahead and start editing this mesh. So just go ahead and select on object selection. And at this point, you can go say into face selection and, and do some extrusions and just continue from there. And you can just start working on your object however you like. Now, the way that I utilize this tool um, generally is to help me maybe plot out maybe a level design that you may have drawn up. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and do something kind of quick and on the fly. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to delete this here. And first thing we're going to do is go into our top down view. Click here. All right, perfect. And so we're going to get about right there. And so let's select new poly shape. And now that we're in a top down view, let's create something about like right here. I'm going to select point and then I'm just going to select another point and let's just kind of just create something on the fly here. You can make pretty much whatever you want. And the really good thing about this is you want to be on a grid. Uh, you don't have to be on a grid, but being on a grid really makes things easier. So I'm going to turn this on if I can. Let's go ahead and actually back out of this for a second. Make sure that we're not in that mode. All right, and let's go back into our note poly shape tool. And now that our grid is turned on, I'm going to click here, click up. And the reason you want it on is because so we can snap. It makes things much easier to uh, work with. So just go ahead and snap that. I'm going to bring it up about right there. Let's bring it up some more. Bring this in here. And my goal here is really just to create maybe some type of corridor. The inside of some type of level. Maybe a space station, something cool. And I'm just going to try to duplicate this, make it mirror this design to the other side. Of course, if you're off for any reason, you can just go ahead and select that and move it. Or you can also do a control Z. And we'll click there. Perfect. And zoom in, click there. And we'll go down here. See where we're at, about right there. And then we'll finish this up by clicking right here. All right, perfect. All right, so since we were in the top view, it didn't automatically give us the ability to extrude it up, but there's a small little point here that we can select and we can extrude it up as high as we need. Um, I'm just going to go up about four, maybe five. And uh, once we do that, once you get it where you want it, you can go ahead and uh, go into object mode. All right, perfect. So the next thing you might want to do is go into, well, in my case, I'm going to flip the normals because my goal here is really just to create the inside of some type of corridor. There's no windows. You're just inside some type of location. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select flip normals here in our menus. 
and that's going to make our ins our outsides inside and so you can tell already it kind of looks like the inside of something now in terms of when you're building a level generally you want to make sure the scale is right before you make a whole lot of changes so I already do actually have a playable character here I can play with here so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the world and let's get a sense already and see what this looks like so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play all right great all right so it's not too bad and that's really already we're seeing just the the beauty of using pro builder where you can just quickly get a sense of space get a sense of scale and it can already be playable um, there's not a whole lot of places for our character to run to but that's okay we can make some changes to that immediately so let's go ahead and do it all right so the first thing we want to do is take a look at this all right so say for instance now that we've used the poly shape tool say we want to maybe create some variation to the to the level a little bit maybe this can go up so let's do that we're going to take this up a little all right that's not too bad we can take this up some actually take it out some and then take it up okay perfect and we can do the same thing here take this out some Maybe take this up some. All right. And the reason I did that is to show you another neat tool that's very helpful is connecting vertices. So with that, as you can notice, the plane here is all one piece, right? So this is all one piece. We technically don't want that. And on top of that, you can tell that it's kind of off and you can see it the way it is here. Well, what we want to do is create an edge between this point and this point. Now, if you don't see these lines, all you have to do is go here and from shade it, you just go to shade it with wireframe. Now, what we want to do is go into our vertex mode, vertex selection and go select this vertex and we'll select this vertex and all we have to do is go into our menu and go down until you see connect vertices and as you can see in edge mode now we created an edge between those two points which fixes our poly issue and we want to do that again to any other edges because our goal is always to really have tries and quads so let's just go ahead and do connect vertices now you can also do this with a hotkey, which is Alt E. So select the two verts and select Alt E. And now when we go into our face tool, we hit selection. We have these two points or these faces are individual now. Now, if you're not able to select within this scene, because we're obviously selecting within this space, you want to go into check off, select hidden. Maybe yours is on. So for instance, if mine's on, it's going to select hidden. Chances are I just selected, it's selecting this because it's hidden. So, but we don't want to do that. We're just going to do this off for now. All right, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is just go throughout this whole level here and connect all the verts that are next to each other here. So Alt E, and you can tell already once I do that, the mesh is changing, adapting to the changes. Alt E, Alt E, and good. So now when we select it, all those are now individual. And we also technically want to do it to the top as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. Alt E. Not too bad. 
makes life so much easier by being able to do this and use the poly shape tool. And we're all set there. So now the top or the ceiling in our case is now also separated. Good, perfect. All right, nice. So let's make some variation to this just to make our little level a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to go to the top view and I'm going to change a few things. Now go over to your select hidden. We want to select hidden on because uh, we want to select everything underneath because when we're in the top view, we can't see all of the vertices underneath. So for instance, if we have it off and we only select, if we drag and select over this, you think you're selecting everything, but you're not, you're only selecting um, what's on top. So what we really want is to select everything, which is also select hidden on. So now we can edit that. So we're going to use that to kind of change this map just a little bit more. And I'm just going to do that. Select all of these here, bring this out, extrude this out. All right, perfect. Not too bad. All right, so what I'm going to do now is create some extra hallways. So I'm going to go into my face select mode and I will, of course, go back to select hit and back to off and I'll be able to select it here. So I'm going to extrude on this space, holding down the shift key. And I'll do the same thing over here, hold down the shift key. Great, perfect. Then I'll hold down the shift key again. And then in this space, I generally think I want to create maybe like a room. By holding on the shift key, we can extrude that out. And maybe drag that out there like so. So we just created a room there. And say, for instance, we want something simple like maybe a door. So I can actually hold down, go into my... tool here and simply and that's my scaling tool and now that I scaled hold down shift and then scale out there you go I'm gonna do something like that perfect and just to give this some variation as well make things a little more interesting. Perfect. And if we just wanted to get a sense again, the power of this is being able to play test immediately. So let's go ahead and hit play. too bad we probably would want to bring up the ceiling a quite a bit and maybe widen the doors a little bit maybe put some stairs in here maybe uh, make these hallways quite bigger I think they can be made bigger and these doors of course can be made bigger but that is the reason this is why you have the ability to make these types of changes on the fly so that you can test out your idea. All right. Well, generally, that is how you utilize the new poly shape tool. It's um, really up to you how you go about it. But this is just to give you a quick and simple way of understanding it. And um, all right. So I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Our next video will probably um, be talking about vertex colors and materials and and then we'll probably get into the UV editor. All right, thanks.